Hey everyone! Uh, today we're doing something different. I'm actually doing a tutorial on how to land the Mirage 2000C. Uh, I've been practicing landing it for quite a while and I couldn't really find a good tutorial on YouTube uh, that has everything I want in it. So I decided to kind of make one, make one with myself actually. See if it's useful for someone. Uh, it's very simple. We're going to do a simple landing approach and uh, going down on Kutaisi. But we're going to practice three different types of landing. First one is the simplest one. We're going to use the standard approach mode in the Mirage 2000. And uh, we're going to do a visual approach. So it's going to be clear weather. Uh, it's a nice sunny day. We're going to do a visual approach of the airbase. And uh, touch down. Just to go through the motions of what you have to do when you land the aircraft. Second, we're going to do a... Um, ILS approach. Uh, it's going to be cloudy and we are not going to be able to see the runway immediately uh, so we're going to use the ILS until we can break through the cloud cover and get a visual uh, on the runway and then we're going to proceed with a standard visual landing. Uh, the last one and this is something unique I think for the Mirage 2000 I think in DCS uh, and I think it's virtually impossible to do this in any other aircraft currently available in DCS we're going to do a zero visibility landing the Mirage has a very cool feature that allows uh, uh, a runway to be projected on the HUD so you can see the runway even though you cannot see the runway uh, and it's a unique feature and I'm going to go over how to set it up <coughs> First, uh, for the runway to be projected on the HUD, you need to have set your waypoint as landing on the airbase, and the airbase has support ILS. As you can see here, here's the frequency for the ILS. Also, uh, during the tutorial, we're going to use uh, TACCAM uh, for a simple navigation to the runway, and as I said earlier, we're going to use the ILS as well. Uh, so we're going to use all the type of different uh, systems in the Mirage. Uh, or rather the, what the Mirage has for uh, landing and uh, we're going to use them a little bit differently uh, each of the three times and I hope you uh, learn something from it or it's useful for you so uh, I'll see you guys soon uh, in the cockpit so we are in the cockpit of the Mirage now and we're going to do a bog standard visual approach landing and I'm going to go through a little bit of the motions of just landing the aircraft uh, speed, heading, uh, altitude and so on uh, first order of business is actually finding the airbase and I happen to know it's right to the right of me so if I look to the right there and well, what do we have here? Uh, an airbase, Kutaisi airbase uh, now step number one is to declare your intent uh, on landing or tell the airbase that you're inbound. So uh, I've already looked this up and I would recommend that uh, you also look up which channels, radio channels or radio frequencies you need to go on. I happen to know that Kutaisi airbase is channel 15. So I'm going to switch to channel 15, activate my comms menu. And then basically tell them that I am inbound. Kutasi, in field, one, one, inbound. In field, one, one, Kutasi, fly heading 297, 47, QFE 29, SL 77, runway 08, to pattern altitude. No, you can basically ignore what he said there because we have a visual on the runway, so we're just going to use our our Mark 1 eyeballs and locate the runway that way and align us up using just basically the visual cues that are available. I'm going to start turning in here and at the same time I'm dropping altitude. I want to be about around 5000 feet when I begin my approach and I'm going to try to lower the speed to below 250 knots so I can extend my landing gear. So this is of course a lot easier if you have track IR so you can follow the long way and quickly look at it uh, but shouldn't be too difficult even if you're not using track IR just know where you have your runway and get a sense of speed it should be fine I'm also going to activate the air to ground maneuvering mode this actually makes the aircraft a little bit more sluggish and allows for more fine tuning uh, of the when, when you're doing your approach so we're going in good here. I'm going to extend my air brakes a little bit to drop some speed. And as we reach below 250, I'm going to retract my landing gear, uh, extend my landing gear, retract my air brakes, and speed up, throttle up a little bit so we don't lose too much speed. 
Now as you're touching down you will, you will want to be around 140-150 knots at the most. Uh, so keep that in mind when you're approaching that you need to lower your speed more considerably than what I have now. So the tower wants me to request landing and that's exactly what I'm going to do. In field, one, one, request landing. clear to land. As we're approaching, we are going to activate our landing and navigation lights so everyone can see us approaching. Uh, also, I'm going to push the APP button here, which stands for approach, and we're going to get some approach information uh, displayed on our HUD. This also activates the ILS if you have tuned in the ILS, which we're going to do in the second segment of this uh, tutorial. Uh, I'm also going to raise my seat make sure that the speed and the altitude are in the top corner of my HUD. And as we approach here now, all you need to think about is keeping this little circle on this uh, edge of the runway and keeping these speed chevrons inside these brackets. That will give you a good angle of attack. Uh, and uh, just making sure that you don't have too little too much speed. As I said, around 140, 150 is what you will be touching down at. As you can see, it's going pretty slow here, but slow and steady wins the race. So I think we're a pretty good uh, approach here. Good speed and good angle. So all there is to it now is just basically to wait until we reach the runway and then flare just a little bit. And we should be fine. There we go, as we're touching down, I'm flaring a little bit and pulling the throttle all the way back. And we're down. Extend the air brakes and squeeze the brake carefully until we have the nose down. And when you're braking with the Mirage, uh, just remember, squeeze one second, release one second, squeeze one second, release one second, squeeze one second, release one second. That's basically how you do a safe braking procedure with the Mirage, if you're not using a drug chute. Uh, once you slow down enough, you can activate nose wheel steering, and we're going to tax out there to the left once we're below 30 knots. And we're there. And uh, as a note as well, um, when you release the brake, you can see here the aircraft keeps rolling. <laughs> so holding the brake, if you want to stop completely, pull the parking lever, then release the brake. And that will keep your aircraft from rolling away. So that's basically how you do a standard visual approach landing using the approach function. Uh, with the HUDs up display in the Mirage. Now on to the next segment when we're going to look at the ILS and try to navigate to the airbase without actually seeing it. <laughs> 